Hi folks, this is Rob Silas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and we've got Mike Myberg here today. Uh, that's the English pronunciation of his name, but Mike is a fellow countryman from South Africa and um, with this video we're going to talk about some of the things that, that uh, is going to be very valuable in the ketogenic space, but also we're going to try to get into some stories from the old country. Both of us have been gone for a long time, but it's yeah. still in our blood and it's still in our history and we go back on a regular basis and we have a passion for the country. And by the way, anybody out there, uh, I had a patient yesterday who's just come back from a, a long trip, a bit of a hunting trip, both for top photographic and rifle hunting in South Africa. He's already booked his return visit. Please, please, please. The Southern African continent is safe and it's beautiful and it is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely. And if you have dollars, dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. Right now it's 18, it's above 18 Rand to the dollar. So it is ridiculously cheap for Americans to go over there. Mike, welcome. Thank you very much. Really yeah, appreciate it. Great to have you here. I know you by taste <laughs> because <laughs> um, I first met Mike. I, one of the passionate things that, that I miss terribly from South Africa is real so-called jerky. An American jerky just doesn't touch sides with it. This is something called biltong Absolutely. and sausage and so Mike, tell us, what is your, go back to the beginning of how you fell in love with Biltong and Vors and what your heritage is with that and what you bring to this country now. Oh, that's a long time ago. So my dad actually, he was a, a big game hunter in Africa when he was in his 20s. So he actually went over to East Africa to, to kill um, locusts. There was a big pest and I actually see it's still a pest going on. But let me stop you for a second because yeah. I don't want to come full circle on this because yeah. so many people in the vegan community to get adequate protein now promoting yeah. eating bugs and insects. Oh, yeah, and I know there are people that fry those locusts from way back, <laughs> but that's not what we're talking that's about. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. So he, he went to spray, but while he was there, uh, he had a passion for, for animals and for hunting, and he actually made part of his living shooting elephants in those days because mm. there were too many elephants. He killed a lot of antelopes, so he had a big Now, what, what time frame are we talking about? Oh, here? that was in 1959. Yeah, so a long time ago, yeah. before we had the, the animal, the, yeah. the elephant issue. So, so yeah, he, uh, he actually lived there, he had to feed his people that worked for him, because he had to build roads. Right. Um, and that's where he actually killed the animals, the, 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 all the, the antelope and everything that he, that he shot to feed his people. So he would go with a big Bedford truck and shoot it full of, of, of antelope, and that's what the people would eat. Mm -hmm. And of course, they did that, and then they basically ate the And I think that's something meat. that's interesting, because yeah. certainly, you go to most South African homes, um, and you'll see at the head of a springbuck or something like that, yeah. usually just the skull, but it's not taxidermy. Yeah. We hunted mm -hmm. for food, Absolutely. Uh, for managing our game, and, and that's an interesting difference between South Africa and the US, is that in South Africa, we own our own game on the farm. Yes. It's fenced in, it doesn't cross fences, it's not, it doesn't belong to the state, it belongs to us, so we farm it. It's wild, but we farm it like we would farm cattle. And we, so we're very preser preservationistic, but we hunt for meat, we hunt for skins. Absolutely. Uh, it's not just the trophies. Trophy yeah. hunting happened when I came to this yes. country. Uh, trophy, trophy hunting is still there. People still go over there. Every time I fly to South Africa, I see hunters coming back. But they're from here going over there. Go the same time South Africans yeah. don't trophy hunt that much. Yes, you do the trophy, but I grew up hunting for meat because yeah. uh, I mean, we lived in a part of a country that was very close to the actual hunting ground. So we went over there, we actually went to kill antelope, uh, impala, springbuck. And actually I remember shooting my first impala when I was 10 years old. Right. And then of course we would take that and we would make bolt on. That's a rite of passage for a lot of us. Absolutely. When yeah. you're anywhere between the ages of six and 12, you yeah. get out there and there's a whole ritual associated with it. We go and kill your first buck and, yeah. you know, the depending on who you are. Uh, and yeah, deliver it. <laughs> exactly that. Yeah, I've been through that. And, and they smear you with blood. I mean, that was that was something that happened exactly the same. We were the Kalahari side, which is the, yeah. the northwest, but exactly the same rituals. But the interesting thing also for me is that if you couldn't shoot, you couldn't hunt. Absolutely. So, and I remember that the test for me was they had a, two bricks and they put them together and they put matchsticks up, yeah. five matchsticks, at a, at a distance. And you had a little pellet gun. And you had to shoot the head off the off the five sticks before they would allow you to get yeah. in the bucket yeah. and go and hunt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was just the again rites of passage. So, and that was open sight, none of this scope stuff. So, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, carry on. Yeah. 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 So, I would go and hunt when I was ten years old. I remember a big trip. We went to Southwest Africa. Yeah. And Namibia. Too. Namibia now. Yeah. And we we shot springbuck. We shot hens um, buck. I mean, that's basically what we did. And when we came back to the camp. That night, you would start working with me. Mm -hmm. So I oh, was yes. 13 years old at that stage, and we had to actually slaughter the animal, cut off his head, cut off the skin, 
and then you would have to make bottom and, and draw wash because that is the, the meat that you would then dry out because if you're there for 10 days, it was so dry there, in 10 days, mm -hmm. that meat actually dries out. So uh, you know what's interesting? Every farm had what it's, it was called a cool room, yes. a cold room, yeah. which is it was a brick room with little spaces in the bricks so the breeze mm -hmm. could come through. Yeah. And in the winter, on I mean, every winter in the three week holiday, the winter holiday, we would go up to the farm and we'd hunt, which was fun for a little while. Absolutely. Maybe shoot a cow, some sheep yeah. for the for the fat. Yeah, yeah. And then for the next two weeks, you were working meat. Yeah. But they would hang the just like you said, they'd hang them and air cool them because it was yeah. cold and dry up there. Can't really do that in Florida. No, you can't do it even in Charleston. Where in Ch I really, yeah, you're up in Charleston, yeah. South Carolina. So tell us about how, uh, what you guys did with the meat up there, how you processed the meat and what we did with it in those days. Uh, so yeah, you would actually then kill the animal, you would cut it up. And we actually, on the outside of the house, under the ledge of the roof, we would have wires strung up and you would actually hang the bolt on and the, mm -hmm. the dribbles. Yeah, those paper, paper clips in your hand. Paper yeah, clips yeah. Outside. Because in winter, you can only hunt in winter because it's cold enough for winter. Yeah. You would hang it outside and it would be in the um, 40s, maybe at night. And that's even fine. I mean, you can actually hang botong at 20 degrees Celsius, which is 71 degrees Celsius, and it'll still dry as long as it's yeah. dry. That, that's the key thing is the, 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 the yes. dryness. Any humidity, it gets miff, it gets mold. Absolutely. So the dryness is very important. And um, I, I love the story about hanging it up because we used to, we had a big garage, what they call a varnace, and yeah, yeah. Um, we had chicken wire spread over the top and you'd hook the, the paper clip would go in and you hook it in, yes. the, the sausage would hang over the top yeah. and it would just air dry. Uh, you, or you, you don't know fans and you just open a window yeah. and ah oh man, it, it, the memories of that. And you'd, we'd salt it and you'd be sitting there, salt coriander, yes. coriander. Um, and then even the skins were salted and left out. Yeah. Uh, so we used the whole animal. Um, but it was, and we'd eat some of the meat uh, uh, as, as meat, but most of it was processed. Yes. As sausage. So, how did you make the sausage? What in the back back home? How did you make the sausage? We we would use fat um, sheep fat if you remember correctly. But in America, you can't find sheep fat. The darker fat, and that yeah, is yeah. fat tails and this yes. thick layer of fat. And but here's the thing: we were not in fact. You had to have fat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was now everyone oh fat so bad for you but but we ha we we actually seeked out we sought out these big sheep we'd bring them in or bring them off the land these big fat sheep yeah. and they weren't wool sheep because we liked the fat. And, and I mean, this wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So I, it just perspectives have changed so much. But yeah, the fat content was so important. The taste is in the fat. If you look it's, at bottom and dry sausage, you have to have fat in because that's. And I want to do the, the taste is in the fat, but also the health. Oh, of course yes, of course yes. I mean, I grew up. So I soft. eat today. I eat meat every single day. I mean, mm -hmm. I would I would grow up and I would drink, maybe eat rusk for breakfast and rusk is something else. But um, I would eat meat the whole day because I, I first of all I need to taste that the food is good mm -hmm. that goes out that I sell. Um, and then there's nothing wrong with it, so the, right, the, the right. customers don't get sick. But yeah, no, we, I love meat. So but I let's eat. take you back to the back to Southwest, back to yeah. Namibia. R talk about when you were younger, how we used to work that meat, because I think you and I shared a similar story. Oh yeah, you have to do it by hand yourself. <laughs> exactly. Uh, by hand, there was no tools to do it. I mean, grinders and stuff, and you had a hand grinder. Yeah. You had this old, uh, I think it was stainless steel, or, or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, and then you had this long tube, and you'd yeah. then throw the meat yeah. in, and it's three chunks of meat for a chunk of fat. Yes. yes. And you had the, the darum, the, yeah. uh, uh, the intestine, the yeah. sheep intestine, and we put that on the tube and, uh, sorry, I just, these are memories, guys, that you don't realize. These are the old country memories. And you'd have this coil and mm -hmm. one kid would be sitting there coiling the sausage yeah. <laughs> and you'd have the thin sausage for the drawers and the thickest. For the drawers, yes. Ah, yes, like and, and we started like that in America because when we came over 17 years right. ago, we actually, I did a, a, a black, in, what's the black, in, a, a Kenwood. And a little grind in front of the yeah, 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 That's yeah, my first yeah. stuff that I, that I had. Yeah. And I had 10 in between then and now. You could, for us it was this one. Someone yes. was on the grinder, yeah. someone was feeding the meat in, someone was putting the yeah. dadams in and feeding it out. <sighs> yeah. And so. we, still, we still use the lamb casing for, for especially for the burros and yeah, for, the, yeah. for the, um, the, the dried sausage because it's a very tender, you don't taste the, the casing yeah. as much. The lamb casing, I and mean, when it dries, it's that very, very fine. Yeah. You don't taste it at all. It's almost like um, if you're familiar with sashimi, it's that little seaweed, but even the seaweed yes. is thicker. But it's, yes. the casing is fabulous. Now, sometimes you can peel the casing off if you choose to. Yeah. And we used to. And some kids does. Right. And I used to, I used to, like, same thing as I used to. Peel the, 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 the label off the castle lager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peel the label off. I'd peel the, 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 the casing off, but you still ate it. And I'd yeah. roll it up and, yeah, but that was like that. And yeah. with good, good times. Uh, but that's, that's in our blood. I mean, I did the first animal when I was 10. And then, I mean, today we, we can't hunt that much anymore because in America, don't really hunt. You shoot animals. 
But we do it for the actual meat uh, yeah, because yeah. American whitetail actually makes a very, very good bull. So tell me about that. So in this country, do you use deer deer meat for biltong? If you can find it, yes. So I do, um, but because it's so different from what I grew up with, I don't hunt as much as, yeah. I, as I would like to, of course. But right? for people, because we've got a lot of our folks who like to yeah. hunt, they live rurally, they, they still live a little bit yes. like we grew up. And for those folks that hunt, I've never, that's something that's new to me. So tell me about how you would do deer, because deer meat's very lean. It's very, very and lean. And it's a little bit wetter than, it's a little yeah. bit finer and wetter than some of... So we use um, whitetail where we live in, in South yeah. Carolina, and we actually use those, we use the back, back uh, strings, the strap muscle, yeah. you know, the strap muscle to, to, to dry it out. I actually haven't made dried sausage of, of the deer. Uh, but you but made the bull The bull absolutely, yeah. And it's a very dry, very lean, and it's very nice. And do you leave it as a round, or do you cut it lengthwise? No, you cut it lengthwise. Okay. It's like a springbok, actually. Yeah, a springbok yeah. uh, bull if, yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's very good, but um, I don't hunt as much just because I'm too busy. But if you do get it, do you use the same spices as the beef? Or do oh you yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely exactly the same spices. Okay. But and you can use different things. Do you hang them first, or do you let them dry, or no, so do it wet? So, no, we do it wet. So we actually use a combination of, of vinegar and Worcester at the stage, and we, we are, use our spices that we do. Okay. And we would spray it, so we don't put that much fluid on it. So right, right, right. we spray it with a little can. Yeah. Um, the, the, which is the, the vinegar, vinegar just makes it sticky. Yes, makes yeah. it sticky, um, and it also cures it. Okay. okay. Uh, and then you leave it overnight, and then the next morning you hang it up to dry. Uh, because that, overnight, it actually draws out the moisture out of the meat. The right, vinegar, right. You put also salt on it. You yeah, put the, the coriander, salt and the coriander, coriander the pepper, and, whatever yeah. you use. And that actually draws out the, the, the moisture. So Perfect. when you actually, the next morning, Take out the meat. The whole bucket is full of um, of, of moisture, of fluid, yeah, and, yeah. and that's all the moisture that gets pulled out yeah, of the meat. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so you dry it just with the with the salt. Use that the the, the, yeah. the spice. But let me ask you this: for the for the folks that live in Idaho and live in the dry climates yeah. where it's cold, it's it's freezing, yeah. but it's dry, that it's humid. Absolutely. Well, what would you recommend they do with a the deer? Let's say they shoot a, a whitetail out yeah. there. Would they strip it and hang it, or how would you prepare it there? So you can you can actually you leave the animal overnight. I would say, and the next case. morning you would cut it because yeah. then the meat is is easier to work with. Because right. if it's a fresh animal, the meat is still warm and it's very difficult to work with. It. Yeah. So even when I make the bolt and if I get, cut the big pieces, I leave it in the fridge and I take the piece out and then I cut it because okay. it's easier when it's more solid. Yeah. Um, to actually work with. So I would leave it overnight. Right. I mean, in South Africa, we used to hang our, food, our our meat for three days before you know the kudu yes, and the yes. krimspa. Krimspa, uh, we used to didn't make the best biltong for me, but the yeah. springbok, the uh, impala, and then the uh, kudu, the biltong, we would let them hang for a long time, for yeah. three or four days. Yeah. So that until they were really dry. Yeah, you can do um, that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so that because I mean, Janae, my wife has a has a home in Idaho. So mm -hmm. okay. uh, anyone that wants to invite me to come and hunt tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that, that would be really good because you see here they'll cube the meat they make them yeah. decide, but making biltong from it is an excellent idea oh absolutely I mean you can actually use the meat and that's the original why the South Africans started making it because we were fighting the English in the Boer War and of course they didn't have fridges and freezers right. to preserve the meat so they would go on horseback to go and fight in the war and they would actually dry the meat this way to actually uh, mature it and to, yeah. to keep it for you know, every period. culture, every culture has dried meat. I remember growing sure, up yeah. in the, the Cape on the coast with bokoms, which were yes, dried fish. fish. Yeah. You'd walk by and there'd be these rows of fish, very Absolutely. similar to the Eskimos. Yeah. So many people dry their native people to their land, yeah. dry their meat. It was a great way of doing it before refrigeration. Mm -hmm. But now let me ask you this along those lines. So if we've got folks out there that hunt regularly that have never tried this, but they have deer meat and they've been, if they were to try first, the first my first recommendation yeah. is try his meat first. Yeah. Order some. But the so second question you have is, do you have do you sell just the spices? I can get the spices. Yes, to you. absolutely. Well, but I mean, no, but I mean, if you sell, I'll tell you one of the first time I made built on in this country, which was 1991, 92. Yeah. Um, in a Palmer, <laughs> she's yeah, a yeah. South African, well-known South African chef. She makes a built on mix. Yes. And I bought her, it was like this little old silver package of built on mix. Yep. And I brought that with me and I could just spread it out. Would it be possible if anybody was interested Absolutely. And I, just for you to make a built on or a mix that Absolutely. they could then buy for their own meat? Because Absolutely. I think if, if they use your secret recipe, yep. it would be very, very useful. And folks, it does conform. Mike does a combination, one that is keto, the other one that is not. But yep. the ketogenic one will be the one if you order it to, to be that way. Because I think selling that spice to a lot of our folks that hunt regularly, it gives you that unique way of making your own meat. And it's actually easier than any other way to make meat. Oh yeah. Because you hang it up and let it dry. Absolutely. You know what the biggest problem with that is? No. With us? No. 
we we were a whole bunch of kids. My my mother had uh-huh. there were five of them in the family, and they had lots of cousins. Yeah, and they'd hang the meat in the garage, and usually it takes five days, maybe seven days, depending on the weather, for it yeah. to dry. By the time my uncle was the head of the family, by the time he got back into the garage, there were a bunch of wires. And there was no meat. It was gone. Even in South Carolina, we used to hang it in the garage. Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, in winter, because it gets drier. But the uh, kids would, the yeah, kids yeah. would just, the, and I mean that stuff was almost raw wet. It was just dry on the outside. But we decimated that. So that's the one problem you're going to have. You're going to be eating it way too soon. <laughs> Blocks off the yeah. bottom pieces of the. Of and I think that's the other. That's the other key thing. So speak to me a little bit about. Uh, the moisture content because biltong is different than jerky in that regard. Yes, at least the way I like it. So, yes. how do you recommend? So, it's personal preference, I think. Um, so, I like my biltong to be wet. Some people, and when we online, you'll see when you order on our website, you can actually choose wet or dry, with fat or without fat. Um, and people always ask me what's the difference, especially in the American community. What is the difference? And I compare it to a rare steak and a well done steak. It's got a lot more moisture in if you order it wet. It's still wet inside, but it's not blood. It's like a, a ray steak. It's not blood that's yeah. in there. It's just, it's the actual, the muscles, the, the yes. myosin of the muscles yeah. that you're seeing. It's, it's not blood at all. You're exactly right. But I prefer the weight one myself. Yeah. Especially with the fat on. Maybe oh. Because again, that's where the taste is. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm pissed off right now that we don't have some sitting right here. <laughs> we will we'll be eating this tonight, I promise you. But, but uh, so, so I think, you, I love that description. It's yeah. the, the well done steak versus there. And then also the other description would be the ribeye versus the filet. Absolutely, yes. And Absolutely. Uh, so it's got that big rind effect because that's really what it's made of, isn't it? Yeah. So um, you've got those four choices. Do you want the rare ribeye, which is, I think, what you and I love? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or do you want the rare filet or the well done filet or the well done ribeye? I do not eat filet at all. <laughs> For me, a filet is tender, yeah. but it's tasteless. Yeah. Because it, it just tastes like the spice you put on it. You know what? I'm totally there. Janae likes her filet. Yeah, yeah. And she'll have the filet from time to time. We always fattened up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So it was butter and that kind of thing. But I'm very much the fat guy. It's completely, it's a preference. Personal yeah. Preference. yeah. But I, I agree with you that the, the nut, the wet, uh, and it's not blood. It's, it's, not, it's Because as you said earlier on, when you leave it in that bowl, it's the, when you said juices, you mean kind, it's the yeah. blood and all the other stuff that drains out. So it's well drained. That's the reason you hang it as well, yeah. is you hang it to drain it. Absolutely. Um, but it is as pure a meat as you can get because all it is is dried and really even just salted yes uh, with a little bit of flavoring from the from the coriander, coriander and, stuff. So, and, the, pepper, and yeah. the pepper yeah but but it's really about as clean as you can make it um, as, 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 any, as, as any animal yeah. product can be absolutely yeah. so um uh, and and as you, it just depends on the hang time is how long you do yes, this. Yes. And it's also quite much thicker than jerky because jerky is this hard, chewable, rubbery, not even rubbery, cardboard tasting yeah. thing. Whereas this stuff is just soft yes. and wonderful to chew. Yeah, so we, we, we cut it uh, about an inch and a half sometimes. My wife always complains because I cut the bolt on most of the time. I cut it thicker because I like it thicker. I like it thicker too. But if you want to dry it out quicker, then you have to cut it thinner. Uh, but it still doesn't actually get as hard as jerky does. Yeah. And then they've got this, something called blader, which is ears, which is closer to, to, yeah. to jerky. But I've never been a fan of that. I've uh, never been a fan of that. The chili bites yeah. and those, which are the tiny little sticks. Now, yes. they're some of the smaller game, the Daker oh, and the swing box. Yeah. They, but, but for me, that big chunk of beef built on with a big rind of fat on it. And it's the fat is hard and yellow. It's not that white soft. So it's, and it's tasty. It's, it's but it's tasty. yellow fat. It's not yes. white fat. Yes, like that stuff is good. One thing you do make talking about the bar is we actually make chili bites, which is a thinner cut that is a string that we actually spice with a chili flavor. And then we hang that to dry, but yeah. that, that is very dry. And people would then sit and, and pull it up with their teeth. Yeah, so, so the chili bites, I never got it. That happened in South Africa after I left there. Yeah. It became popular. And I'm not a big spice guy, but for folks that like their peppery spices, yes. the chili bites are ridiculously good. Yes. And they're dry and they're small and you can chew them. Yeah. Or what some people do is they'll take a hammer and bash them with a hammer and then they scoop uh, yeah. them a little bit. So, so what we do is the piece of bottom that you can't cut through the machine because I cut my finger off once. Oh. Um, we always leave that yeah. to, to dry out and then we put in the blender and you get a powder that you put on a toast or a, a, a healthy you put a salad. cracker or a yeah. salad. Yeah, but we sell that because I don't know what other people does with it, but 
we actually sell it. We give it to people for presents, um, just to, to get them the, the taste and the flavor. Yeah, the, the powdered biltong is something that, yeah, in the old days we used to eat it on toast or a piece of bread or whatever, yeah. with a thick layer of butter. Yeah. Now you can actually just take a little bit of butter yeah. and put it on there. Now I'll eat it with a fork, but that's not because you're getting the dry. The dry biltong doesn't have the visible fat in it, but it tastes the powdered butter is oh, really good. It's, it's and awesome, if you eat it with a bit of butter, man, it's good. Well, you mix it with cream cheese. Cream cheese, you yeah. Stick with yeah, cream cheese yeah. or whatever you eat, eat it with, yeah. Uh, and, and we'll see some of that in a little bit. How, yes. how we do that. So absolutely. that is absolutely fantastic. So Mike, you were talking about the chili bites and you say that, uh, you know, so we were just chatting uh, as James was changing the cartridge over there that yeah. um, if anybody places an order with Mike, a decent order, he may throw in a little chili bite yeah. for you to try because some people like, uh, man, there are people out there that just die for that. And I'll take their built on while they eat yeah. my chili bites. But the other cool thing you said, you're going to sell them in gas stations? Yeah, in gas stations, yeah, because it's something that's small, it's very easy to eat, it's good protein. Uh, it's really awesome. But right, and it's so much better. You know, if you look yeah. at that, uh, we used to buy them from time to time, the Slim Jims. Slim Jims. Yeah. But if you look at them, it's this much meat and this much artificial ingredients yeah. and flavoring and cup. Yeah. And um, it, it, and that's a word you can look up on the dictionary. <laughs> but uh, um, this stuff is pure. It's pure. Yeah. And that's the beauty about it, is about as natural a meat as you can get. Actually, also around chili bites, we actually get people calling us for the kids. So in South Africa, when the kids grow up, we give them both on for teething. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. it's salty, the kids chew on it, and it's very good for, for that itch. So we actually, on request, we actually make teething both on, which is just nice. both on in the same cut as a chili bite. Now, exactly now, the same. You saw my little my little boy, Rian, on one of the things yeah, that yeah. came in. Now, Rian has been a carnivore since he was an egg and a sperm, okay, yeah. his whole life. <laughs> and the very first thing that he that he ate when he was four months old, yeah. um, I cut off now, it wasn't, it wasn't quite built on, but it was a big chunk of ribeye steak yeah. with that big piece of fat long, and I held it in, in my hand saying, so so and he gummed that thing yeah. to pieces. Yeah. And he had all of his teeth, all of his baby teeth by 10 months, yeah. because he spent his time chewing. Yeah. And from a jaw perspective, if you want to save yourself tens of thousands of dollars of orthodontic food, yeah. give them meat, give them the stuff to suck on, to gnaw on, to chew, because they develop their jaw muscles, they develop their teeth, their whole jawline becomes good. And if you look at native uh, uh, people that live on the land, hunter-gatherer folks, all of them, from the Japanese to the Africans to the Mongolians to the Inuit to the uh, 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 Native Americans, they all have beautiful dentition. Where does it come from? Chewing as young children, chewing their meat, chewing those yeah. tough things. And now Rio will take a piece of built on our warrior, he's going to choke, but he'll just chew the garbage out of that, yeah. the crap out of it. And yeah. so... That is such a brilliant idea. You're not giving them a piece of rubber to chew on. Yeah. Give them some meat. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't have it on, on our menu and on our website, but it's absolutely something that we do get from time to time. And if the, the demand is there, we'll absolutely yeah. put it Just there. make sure you watch them so they don't choke on it. But it is, it is, it is firm enough that it, it melts a little bit. And they, they get the taste. They get that uh, wonderful, all the stuff that is in that meat, all the healthy stuff that's in the meat that is not in Gerber products. Yep. And Rian has never ever eaten baby food because this is what he eats. Yep. And he loves his, I mean, you'll see him tonight just go ballistic with a, with a vorse. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing is also, that, you know, the vorse, what is sausage? What is drua vorse? It's basically ground beef with a lot of fat in it yep. that's put in a casing and dried. Yep. Or you can get it wet. Yep. And um, that's the other thing. I mean, that's what I die for as well. It's just, that's the biggest problem is I just snack the hell out of it. Yeah. And I've got to be very cautious about not snacking on it too much. That's our biggest seller. People love the taste of, of the drill wash. Yeah. Uh, because of the fat content in there. We use beef fat because we can't find sheep fat, but it is still really It's still so good. Yeah, yeah. And now let me let me go down this road because this is a very important concept and it's just modern. But the USDA yeah. um, has a specific the US dietary guideline or, or, or um, what are they? The USG it's USDA. USDA, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, um, they have specific requirements of how much fat they can be. They have upper limits of fat moisture. Yeah. Fat and moisture. Yeah. So the food that you provide is outside of yeah. those standards. Yeah. So you can, if you want to sell through someone else, you have to be USDA. I can sell to anyone direct with the South right. Carolina right. regulation. But with USDA, if I want to sell to a store that sells, then you have to be USDA, and then they want to regulate the fat content and the moisture. Yeah. And if you take the fat out of it, the moisture out of it, you might as well eat. You yeah, know, a dry, a, a dry turd. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and that I think is where 
the American community has suffered because of their jerky, because yeah. jerky tastes better when it's a little moister and a little fatter Absolutely, yeah. and thicker. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, the problem that Mike has is you can't sell USDA, you can't sec third party it. Yeah. The chili bites will probably conform because they're going to be dry. Will actually yeah, yeah. They're dry, so yeah. they, they will conform. But for the most part, you've got to order it direct. Yeah. And that's the focus there is going to the website and ordering it direct. Yeah. And then also, you know, it's shipped fresh. And it's, it's hand selected and hand packed. You know, that's a good thing. We pack the Biltong when we ship it to you the same day. Because Biltong is better when it's fresh. I mean. Yes. Like, like anything, especially yeah. fresh food. Yeah. So when you get it, it's been in the pack for three weeks. Ah, for three days. Three sorry. days, yeah. For three days. As opposed to when you buy something at Costco, you do buy Biltong and stuff at Costco. It's a plastic it's been there thing, for, it's for a month or two, three, yeah. 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 And it tastes like nothing, as you say. Yeah. So it is really, really fresh when you get it, when we actually ship yeah. it. And please, guys out there, uh, if you, listen, I'm a huge proponent of South African products. So you will find things called Kalahari Biltong and that. They're good. They're better than jerky. But the problem is they have to conform to USDA standards. Yeah. And therefore, they're dry. And they are they don't have fat, they're lean. And so those are fine to buy. We bought them from before, and I've done it. It just it's in a polar opposite side. It's like eating a wonder what is called a better than better than meat burger yeah. versus a nice juicy ribeye steak. It yeah. just doesn't compare. Yeah. So if you order directly from Mike, you're gonna get the fat rind, you're gonna get the thick piece yeah. of biltong. Uh, you'll see the you can you can compare the product, Absolutely. compare the look of it. Um, and I think that so even if something says biltong. If you buy it in a store, it's in a plastic bag, it's got a little square of dehydrating stuff in it, yeah. and it's been packaged for a long time. Yeah. The way you package it, which is really cool, so it can breathe, in the is in, the, in triple, triple layered in paper bags. Yeah, yeah so in a, in a butcher, when you go to say, in South Africa to a butcher, you buy it in a paper bag. Mm -hmm. Because the paper, the brown paper actually absorbs the fats and the oils. It's a little bit like the old fish and chips that were in the yes. newspapers in the old days. Absolutely. So Sucks it actually world. just keeps it fresher. Yeah. Um, so we, we put it in there because it also makes sure that it doesn't mold as quickly. Because it's wet, anything that's wet that you put in a in close area for, for, for a time, especially if it's warm in your car, um, it's going to mold. Yeah. And so along, along, those, along those lines, Mike, um, and, and that also speaks to the freshness because there's no preservative. Yeah. Preservatives prevent mold so you can store it for a long time, but then you're eating all that preservative crap. This yeah. is preservative free. Absolutely. So the question I have is, okay, I buy a big chunk of Biltong from you. And I mean, if it's not all gone, yeah. what is the time frame that I can leave it out before I finish it completely? Or how would you recommend people store it? Okay. Uh, freeze it, store it. Well, how do they protect the product so it's available to them? So, Grobors, we froze them for up to a year. So, in the old days, wow. when, we, when we came, we actually made in November when it was cold enough to actually make it in South Carolina. And we would freeze it for up to a year sometimes. So, you've got it year round. Year yeah. round. So, we can have it, yeah. And, and you just when, you, when you freeze it, do you have to vacuum seal it? Do you no, have you to? don't. Do. You just put it in the bag. We put it in these Ziploc plastic bags. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the Grobors was drier. Biltong, I wouldn't do that. If you buy it from us, you would open it up yeah. in the brown paper bag and put the brown paper bag in the fridge. Because the plastic bag. Yeah, and that's how we Because do the plastic it. bag yeah. keeps moisture in. Yeah. And then people call me three weeks later and say, but no, I just open it up and it's molded. Yeah. But it's because all the moisture, especially if it's wet, it's it trapped. traps the moisture. So you can mold. can you freeze the biltong? You can, yeah. So you freeze you, it just in the paper bag? Yes. Or? Okay. In the paper bag. Yeah. Um, so I, I would recommend buying the old pieces like you do, Rob, the old pieces. Yeah. And then you freeze that because that freezes better and it yeah. keeps the freshness longer. I was telling you I was telling a funny story because you uh, uh, we got some from you and I just uh, last week yeah. finished the last piece, but it was frozen. The fr I actually happened to find it, it fall in the back of the fridge. Yeah. And uh, in the freezer. Yeah. And I took it out, it was triple bag. I took it out and I've got, uh, my mother-in-law bought me this beer. It looks like oh, one of those yeah. big machetes, but it's a special built-on cutter. Yeah. So I was sitting there cutting the built-on. Now it's frozen, okay? This stuff is like a rock, it's frozen. Yeah. And I'm busy cutting it and I look over, oh, the built on has gone. And I see these little hands coming <laughs> and grabbing and eating. And that was real, I'm eating yeah. the frozen built-on. He loves yeah. it so much. but. Yeah, so that's I the, wouldn't freeze it for too long, but you can freeze it for a couple of weeks. Um, okay. Just don't put it in the bag as you get it in the fridge. Just open it up and make sure it's all the moisture escapes, especially from the traveling. Because yeah. I don't know, if I put it in UPS, I don't know where it's going to, what right. climate, right. what conditions right. go through. And that's how you ship, you ship UPS. We only ship UPS because we ship maximum three days. Sometimes it's four days. So if we ship to Hawaii, uh, it's four days. Wow, that's Hawaii? To Hawaii. Wow. We actually ship to a guy that is stationed on a ship. No, we vacuum is. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah. he's never had a, had a problem, but yeah. we wow, back in the crazy. office, so and then it sits there for two weeks in the, in the yeah. vacuum bag. But you see, if I lived in Alaska, I'd be buying those spices and, and shooting them my, them. my own, making my own, yeah. or perhaps even buying some of the, the deer meat or the... Or well, the I'll come and do it for you in Alaska. <laughs> 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 um, but it's, okay, so, so what is your range of meats that you sell? We've talked about the biltong, we've talked about the durovors. Yeah. Tell us about the, the wet, wet sausage. Okay, so we also make uh, what we grew up as for our dog. It's yeah. a, a wet, growable sausage. Now, there are three different variants that we do. But uh, it's not pink slime. No, it's not pink slime. No, 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 no. It, it's, it's the same meat. We use it's the chunks of meat that you, you can see the chunks yeah. of meat in there. We use brisket for the, for, the, uh, for the fat content or we use pork. Mm -hmm. for the pork fat, yeah, for the fat yeah. content. Depends on what you want. Some people can't eat uh, pork, so we actually have a beef only version, yeah. which we use the brisket for. But the pork fat is, a lot of my folks will eat, they, they use bacon as a condiment, or we use pork belly, you know, the, that real yes. fat. So they use that as a condiment, so that's the kind of thing you're talking that, that's about. That's what we use. So what is your fat content? What is your... 30% uh, fat. 30% fat. Content. fat. Yeah. So, well, 30% so pork belly that we use. Okay. But so by, it is but, a little bit less fat. Okay, right, right, but there's a little bit of meat with it. Yes. But the meat itself can have a little bit of fat. Absolutely, well. yes. So absolutely. You, let's call it 30%, but that's by gram. Uh, Is that grams? No, that, that's percentage. 20%. Oh, correct, correct, yeah. but, but that's by gram. You see, yes, yes, uh, yes. What, what my folks uh, understand is that when you look at, at fat and protein, um, by gram, yeah. it's gram for gram. But when you look at calories, the calories, not that we use calories very often, but the protein calories are four calories per gram, yeah. whereas the fat is nine calories per gram. So for those of you that eat an 80-20, you're looking at about, this is probably about a 75 to 25 yep. by calorie. So it fits totally into that 80-20 uh, spectrum. Yep. And that's where coming off the USDA is so useful, you can go up on your fat percentage. Yeah. And that's what I love about it, yep. is, is that fat. And the fat in that, with that meat doesn't go rancid, it's not an issue. Not so um, for folks that like the BBBE challenge and the 80-20, and the this stuff conforms completely to what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and that's the beauty about it. It also has wishes that and vinegar in, so it yeah. also cures it to some level. Yeah. But we freeze it when we ship it to you guys. We have a thicker and a thinner one. The thicker one I prefer, it's got a hot casing. But you and I like the wet. You see, I like it. Yeah. when I grill the wet one. Yeah. It's gonna be wet on it's still gonna be almost yes. raw on the almost inside. Almost raw on the inside. Actually, I eat the, the raw, the raw. Okay, so that's really important because well. I do the raw as well. Yeah. Okay, so there is a small community out there that eats raw food. Now, yeah. when it comes to burrivores, yeah. I'll actually take it like this and I squeeze it out and I eat the raw stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna ask this question because it's an important question. You're going on record. The stuff is safe to eat raw. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. I mean, we buy USDA certified meat. Right. But we can't make a product that is USDA certified. Right. Although the Burubos, I will actually, at some point, mm -hmm. I probably will certify because that is certified. With, with a lower fat percentage. Yes, though. yes. Yeah, so I won't buy that. I'll just get it directly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, but, I, but, but the, and I think that's useful for the volume. Yes. But this stuff is safe to eat raw. And for those of you, just if the spicing is correct, and it is on my stuff, done yes. this, you eat that. Burrivos raw, and my wife will go crazy because she's American, but we're yeah. South Africans. Yeah. But man, it's so good. Yes, we also make a hamburger patty from the same thing. Oh, okay, so you sell hamburger patties as well? We sell hamburger patties, we actually sell just the ground beef. Because you can with make the, a with pasta with, with, with your spices. With the spices, all yeah. the spice. Because so when, you, you, when you buy a hamburger in the store today, yeah. it doesn't have any spices in it. And people often don't spice when they make the hamburger. Right. So this is a hamburger that you can put up on the hamburger, and it's really And I, really I assume tasty. you're not afraid of salt. No, no, no. Because our guys no, no, no. are huge into salt. I mean, yeah, yeah. we typically, I aim for between five and eight, five and seven grams of salt a day in my own personal use. Yes. So when you're not eating carbohydrates, that salt is important. Yeah. And so often the meat is low, low, low in salt. So this food has salt in it. Don't Absolutely. be afraid of that. Absolutely. Yeah, we actually made a, made a mistake to actually salt the, the hamburger patty as we grilled it the first time because we yeah. thought it was already Oh, you spiced. threw extra salt on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. a little bit overspiced. Yeah. Yeah. And so your spices are in the, in the hamburger itself. In the hamburger. And when you, can you order hamburger meat from you, just the bulk meat? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can. because, you know, one of the things we do a lot is what we call, uh, uh, what's it, no taco taco. So mm -hmm. it's just the ground beef. Now, yeah. with this meat, does it fall apart like, like ground no. beef? or no. So it sticks together it as sticks a... sticks together. So because that's what we make the hamburger patty. What we get yeah. grilled tonight, that's the, yeah. the same meat that we put in the sausage. Lacquer. It does not fall apart. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And, and that gets shipped and, and dealt with in exactly All the same over 50 way. states in America. Okay. Yeah. Do you put anything ever like onions or cheese or anything like that in there? Not yet. People have asked me to do yeah. that kind of thing. I have not done that yet. Yeah. You know what's interesting? One of the things that, that we add, the, if you, we've got a lot of pure carnival patients. Mm -hmm. uh, people that are pure carnival. We're 
95% carnivore in our own home. You'll yeah. see at home, it's almost all carnivore. So what we look for with a carnivore diet is making sure we're getting adequate micronutrients. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the protein and the fat is easy, but the micros are an issue. Yeah. And the four things we look for for micronutrients, eggs, yeah. dairy, especially cheese, yeah. liver, yeah. and organs, and then uh, um, uh, small fish and shellfish and things. We'll leave the fish out. Yeah. But these hamburgers and things you make, the other three, the eggs, the, the dairy, and the liver, yeah. um, can be mixed into that food very easily. So Absolutely. when I make the big ground beef, my wife hates liver, yeah. but you can camouflage liver, beef liver, or even chicken liver, yeah, sausage, by wishing yeah. it in the sausage. I'm if if there's an amount for that, I'll, I'll definitely look at that. But I'm not doing that today. No, 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 no. no. It's but absolutely I'm, good. It's, it's, you have access to those things? If I, you, yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, liver. We eat a lot of liver at home as well. You do? Okay, because, because yeah. liver is something that a lot of Americans don't like the taste of it. But we know in our space that liver is one of the healthiest things you can eat. Mm -hmm. So it may be worthwhile to experiment a little bit. And you and I can talk about this yes. to see how we can do the liver. Because if we can maybe for this... If the, if the demand is there, liver enriched ground beef, well, you don't taste it, yeah. but you know it's in there. My son, actually, when he was young, he had an iron, iron deficiency. Oh, yeah. He, he yeah. ate a lot of liver. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a good way to, to, to disguise that, especially from kids that doesn't want to eat liver. Yeah. Because liver is absolutely very, very good. Yeah, and, and I love my liver, and, and Rian loves his liver, but uh, just to camouflage it in there. And then, whenever you take that meat out, you know you're getting the liver with it anyway. Yes. So it, those are very, very useful things to do. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about mm -hmm. special liver recipes and things. Because yeah. that, that's another, again, this is all of the animal product yes. uh, that, that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So absolutely love that. Awesome. Um, what other products do you have out there? And I know some of your products are not necessarily keto. completely keto friendly. Yeah. Uh, they conform more to the way we used to eat in South Africa. Yeah. What other products do you have that may be keto friendly or not? So we have a sausage roll, which is the same, uh, same burros meat. And the reason I'm doing that is because <laughs> I, those things, I can't stop eating them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is really it's, good. We, we actually brought something with us. So it's basically the same meat that we put in a pastry and a dough. Uh, a it's, a pastry. Pastry. It's, it's a phyllo pastry. It's a phyllo pastry. Yeah, I mean, it is, for those of you, nobody on this community listens to this, but it, yes. it's this beautiful golden, phyllo, light, fluffy phyllo yeah. pastry with the meat on these. But now the meat in a sausage roll is much finer. Actually, it's not. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Because the sausage yeah. rolls I used to grow up with, they were, they, that was kind of when I talk yeah. about pink slime, it was yeah. the brown slime on the inside. You know what it might be is sometimes when we stuff the actual sausage, there is a little yeah. bit left at the bottom of the. And stuff. that's what you use. The, and sometimes we use that, but yeah. that could have been yeah. that you just because. It but the commercial ones that we bought, like yeah. if I go to pick and pay and I see it, it's just the. Yeah. Whereas the, the other thing that we do in South Africa, and and this is where the organs, why we're comfortable, we have steak and kidney pie. Oh, yeah. Uh, and do you do any of those? We actually do pies as well. Um, it's an English thing that the South Africans inherited, but we do pies, like in steak and kidney pies, pepper steak pies, or... A, a lot chicken of, and mushroom was the chicken other Chicken and mushroom, chicken curry. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've been actually, because another lady sold it to us that we sold it, we actually, we are buying a company out. So oh, we're right, going to okay. make it okay. ourselves now. Lacking. But that is obviously, that is not... Yeah, it's not... Uh, not that, that, that would actually really be good. on the no list yeah. for me, as much as I grew up on that stuff, and yeah. partly to blame for me having to reverse that. But, uh, and then the other question I have, I know you are, you're from up in the Transvaal, I'm down south, yeah. but in kind of the eastern part of the country, they have, uh, we, there was a lot of Indian, a lot of Malayan Indian yeah, influence, yeah. Bani Chow. Oh, Bani Chow, yeah. Have we, you ever done Bani Chow? Or? We actually, we do a yearly event in Charleston. We're actually doing one on September 23rd. We actually had Mark Hennigan mm -hmm. from Black Mountain. He actually had a restaurant there. He actually owned Madiba. I don't know if you know yeah, yeah, Madiba. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah. owned Madiba's restaurant and he actually came to make bunny chow for us last yeah. year. And the people just loved it. Yeah. That is really a curry, lamb curry in half a loaf of bread. Now, and you see for me, the, the, the way, and I, we were at the Sevens tournament. Uh, I've done it twice. Yes, one, in, one in Vegas and one in LA. LA yeah. And they have, this, they have a South African stool there. And the guy had bunny chow. Mm -hmm. guy actually lives in San Diego. Yeah. And I just said, you know, Give me the bunny chow, because the way bunny chow works, it was a poor person's food originally. They ate it when they were working on the railways. We had indentured slavery in South Africa, like so many countries. And um, it was a lot of Indians that were brought over as slaves to South Africa. That's how that part of the world was populated with Indians. But they would hollow out a, a half a loaf of white bread, take the inside out, and pour this mixture of uh, curried uh, lamb, usually, yeah. in the middle. And man, that lamb was so good. But you don't, and you could eat it almost like a sandwich. Yeah. But you don't need the bread. 
So if you get the stuff that goes in the middle, just make sure there's no potatoes in it. Yeah. It conforms completely to what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so we still eat a lot of curry, lamb curry without the bunny chow. Oh, you do? Bread. Okay. And um, yeah, we because we come from South Africa, yeah. we love yeah. a good Indian curry. We actually have an Indian lady in Charleston where we love that actually mixes our own spices. Now, you know, what, you know what Janae learned to make? Yeah. She makes a keto babwiti. Oh, boy. Which That's is good. fantastic. Yeah. It is. It's got the sweet curry in it. It's got the yeah. bay leaves, but it's got the, it's got the meat and no carbohydrates. So yeah. she, she uses egg, an egg mix mm -hmm. rather than a yeah. flour mix. That stuff is so, so good. She can actually use the ground beef that we have, the spiced ground beef for the... Perfect, for the babuti. For the babuti yeah. as well, yeah. She's got to use this. Now, the one thing that we haven't found out yet is what else can you do with sour cream? Because she buys the sour cream, not the sour oh, cream, yeah. the, um, what is the green cap, the... What's it called? The the it is sour milk, sour milk, sour milk, yes, sour yes. milk, buttermilk, yeah. buttermilk. 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 Yeah, we make the rust from that. Yeah, so if you buttermilk, we, there's always half a thing because you use the buttermilk in the uh, left, yeah. in the the, the, the babuti, yeah. and then we've left with this buttermilk, and <laughs> what do we do with it? <laughs> What's interesting is Mandela Nelson Mandela used to in his prison cell yeah. take a quart of milk like that in the yeah. box and put it on the on the shelf in the sun to get thin. for three or four days and drink it thick, and then that was the sour milk that My they drank. My family did the same thing. Same thing, yeah. It was a very very it's a very still a very common thing, delicacy in South yeah, Africa. Absolutely. So our tastes are a little bit different, but this is, it's so cool to yeah. reminisce about this. Yeah. And it, it sounds like you're very much in expansion mode and you're, you're building I am. Thing. So we started very small with COVID, of course, we, we didn't have to travel, but I've been doing this for 17 years. And um, so our friends always nagged us, we have to start selling. And we started just with a Yeah. And they said, don't you do both on Burabors? And then we started doing it. And we started in our garage just with uh, a small fridge and, and it's just growing. And there's just more and more. I mean, we ship all over the country every single week. Uh, we ship to, to 50 states, as I said. So yeah, we're expanding. Fantastic. And how do people get a hold of the product? Um, I, I, on our website. On your website. What is your website? Tell it, me what. It's, it's Lofeld Soul Food, um, and it's L-O-W-F-E-L-D-Soul-Food.com. Uh, same name on, um, on, on Instagram, also on Facebook. And then if you use the promo code, I think it's Carb Addiction Doc. Yeah, you get 10%. You get a 10% discount on yeah. the product. And hopefully, as I'll convince uh, uh, Mike to throw a chili bite in there if you, if you make an order. We can actually, so we can, do that because it, that sells for us more product. Than absolutely, it does. I so mean, we it's, do a, that. it's a little lost leader, as they say in absolutely. the business. But I, I, I'd love for people to try that because this is not a foreign taste. This is a superior taste. So Absolutely. often you try other cultures' foods and it's like, eh, I can see why they have it, but maybe not. But this is superior food yep. um, because of the USDA guidelines. Yep. And I suspect this is the way that a lot of the native Indians made it because they had to have eaten the deer meat that you yep. talked about. They had to preserve thing. meat at some point. Right. Yeah. And now we've had to change how we do it because, of, because fat is bad for us. Yeah. So, man, this is lacquer. This was awesome. so, so good. Thank you. Any rugby stories? One last rugby story to end on. Can you tell me a rugby story from anywhere, anytime? Because that's what that's what we always do when we have a bride. You know, so we, we grew up in rugby, of course. Um, and as you can see, I'm wearing a rugby shirt. I see that, yeah. My son actually <laughs> still plays rugby. He's in his final year nice. um, next year in, in USC in South Carolina. Um, and he plays rugby. Uh, but, you know, I, I live in Charleston. And the guy that actually got me onto this business, he is Guy Foster. Uh, he played for Canada. He's a South African okay. that, that moved to Canada. And, and now he lives in Charleston. Yeah. And I sponsor their rugby team in Charleston, South Carolina, Wonder Rugby. Um, and that's how we got to know each other. And uh, we're good friends. Uh, we still play rugby together. But my knee got shot, so I can't play rugby anymore. Yeah, no, I've also uh, shot a knee over here. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, obviously we played rugby. Everybody plays rugby. I, mean, I was in the 13th team in in grade seven, grade eight, in the one grade, because we had 13 teams in one grade. Yeah, yeah. Um, compared to the, the football that you get here, we maybe have two teams. We had 13 teams in every grade, and they were, I mean, 12 grades. Yeah. And yeah. everybody played rugby. So it is, we are crazy about our rugby. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'll tell you just a, a little story about rugby. I played my whole life. I played from the age of five to the age of 37. Yeah. In fact, my last game I ever played was up in Canada. I played in Canada. Oh, yeah. And I got knocked out. I broke seven teeth. Um, mm -hmm. It was a guy, that, uh, American football player, that tackled me after I'd lost the of ball. Course, but, yeah, so I said, you know what? I'm old enough now, let's hang the cleats up. Yeah. And in fact, that's where I gained my weight. Oh, yeah. I gained a, a ton Stop of weight, weight after yeah. that because you stop playing, depression happens, and yeah. I was still eating the old way. But um, I played at the University of Cape Town. I played under 21 rugby at the University of Cape Town. And we had a coach, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but a very well known South African rugby player. Yeah. But when he coached us, he had a limp. Yeah. 
And he always wore long pants and he had a limp and we didn't understand. And this is the rugby culture. And for those of this goes back a little bit, but um, this guy uh, was a Springbok rugby player, was a prominent rugby player, but he, was, he, he suddenly had to retire. Yeah. So uh, one day it was really hot and he took off his pants and I could, the, his whole calf muscle was missing. It was just this hollow over here. Oh, yeah. So that's where he was limping from. And you know, when we play, we have a match and we played against, uh, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't our nemesis up in Stellenbosch, <laughs> but um, we had a game and then after the game, you beat the crap out of each other on the field and then you go and have beers together at the clubhouse. And then we kill each other in the field and then we've got arms around each other in the clubhouse and we're chatting, it's an amateur sport. And we'd had a couple of pops at this uh, in the clubhouse yeah. at UCT and he came and sat with us and there were about six of us sat turned around. It was the end of the evening, early morning and... Um, Someone asked him, you know, what's the story? And he was there with one of the other coaches that I didn't know that well, but that had played with him. And he said, he took, I remember the guy stood up to tell the story and his friend took, put his hands on his shoulders and he pushed him down and said, you're not going to hear the story, tell me. You're not going to tell the story. And he stood up and this guy was a, was a lock and he was at least six foot seven, yeah. a huge guy, played also South Africa, on the South African team. And he told the story and he said, we were playing over here. Newlands was just down the road. Yeah. We were playing in Newlands and we were staying at this hotel. And um, after the game, we went to Forrest's. Uh, Forrest's is a, is a pub near my old high school, but just up the road from, from this club. And the pubs, you'd, you'd go in there and the whole team would sit down and drink. Yep. And they'd had a whole night of drinking. And then across the road, across the main uh, road, Roads Drive in, in Cape Town, was the zoo. Yep. And the zoo had this line enclosure. And in the back was the lions, their little cages, yep. but they had this free run of this big semicircled area and there was this big golf. So instead of having fences, they had a little rail, but they had this huge, wide, deep trench yep. that the lions couldn't get out. So like a moat? Like a moat, yeah, but it was dry, but yeah. yeah, exactly. So these boys, they had a couple of pops and they all uh, went up to the lions. No, they're going to go and pull the lion's tail. Okay, <laughs> so that's what they're going to go do. So they go along there and the, there's a couple of the boy lines, male lines, lying out in the front of this, uh, 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 on their little patch outside their cages. And the first guy gets in there, <laughs> sprints across and the lions are just checking him out, nothing happening. Second guy uh, goes in and he runs across and he stops in front of the lion and the lion does nothing and he runs off. This guy goes up, third big boy, third one. Nicely, nicely sosed, nicely hammered from, <laughs> from a, a pop or two. Goes across and he stands in front of the line. The lion's just standing there. So I said, okay. So he walks around the line. The lion's just standing there. He grabs the lion's tail and he pulls the lion's tail. And the lion turns around and whacks him with his, with his forefoot and ripped his whole calf muscle off. Game over. End of, the, yeah, end of yeah, his yeah. career. Yeah. yeah, ripped him off. The boys had to go and rescue him. But that's how he lost his calf muscles. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's just, but I mean, that's what we... Beer and rugby. We did some stupid stuff, but, <laughs> but that was it. And you know what? I broke 32 bones in 32 years playing rugby, oh, wow. including 17. And I will give every single one of them again. Yeah. Every one of them again to play. And I never played well. I never played great rugby, but it was my culture. Oh, yeah. And built on that's, rugby. That's where we grew up. Yeah. Built on yeah. rugby is, is just absolutely married together. Absolutely. absolutely. So, Mike, thank you very much. This thank was you very uh, much. great thank to you. have a listen a little bit. And I think that your product is fantastic. Absolutely. Thank We're going to see much. some more of it tonight. We enjoy it. Thank you very much.